Hello guys. So for a very long time, I've had the belief that Excel was lacking a very important function, the contain function, the function that allows you to check whether a value can be found in a list. So if I had an example like this, where I have a name like Austin, right? And I want to check whether Austin can be found in the list of full names in this table. My table is called uh, data. So I want to see if Austin can be found in this name. I'll have a function like contain, so I'll simply do equal to contain, right? Open bracket. I'll select the list, so data. Then I'll say full name, right? Then I'll select the value. Close bracket, press enter, and I'll get the results of whether true or false, whether Austin can be found in that list of names. So for the longest of time, we've used several combined functions to actually come up with that kind of results we are looking for. Um, a very popular one is that it's number match. So what we do is equal to, we basically say that if a value can be found in a list, it should have a position in that list. So you say match, you take the lookup value, which is the value you're looking for, then you take the list, so data, right? Then you say data full name, that's the list you're comparing it to, then match is exact type, right? Close bracket later. And if you get a value, then that means that person's name is in the list. So you're going to see it's number, um, it's number of this, and then close brackets here, press enter, and you have true, right? And so this has been, the for me, the most popular, or the one I use the most to check whether a value is in the list, okay? But I always still felt like Excel needed a contain function or an is in function, right? So you know whether something is in the list or not. But then it just dawned on me that Excel has always had this function. We just didn't realize it. And that function is the all function, right? O R O. So with Excel's dynamic arrays, it's possible for you to check whether a value can be found in the list using the all function. Let me show you how it works. So if I do equal to, right, and I take a list, so let's say data full name, because of dynamic arrays, when I press enter, I have the list of full names. Right, now, if I compare this list of full names right, to a value, it's going to tell me where everything is false. And then if that name is there, at that particular point, you have a true. So over here, I have Austin, and that's why I have a true, and everything else is, is false. So if I simply wrap an O around this, so OR, like that, right, close bracket, enter, and ta-da. You have your you have your contains function. It's basically an all function where you're equating the list to the value you're looking for. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and you you you'll be surprised how powerful this function can be and how you can use it to do some very amazing things. And I'm going to show you very soon. All right, so this is how it works. Now let's see if you wanted to compare using a list. All right, so you have a list over here. You want to compare this list to the main list. Now, in its current state, the all function doesn't allow you to kind of spill. So if I do all of this and I say um, data full name, okay, equal to this list, the all function doesn't spill, right? So I'm going to get an error. So what I need to do is I need to use a lambda function called by row. So equal to by row, right? Equal to by row. I select my array, which is this, right? And then I'm going to call my lambda. Okay, and then I want to state my parameter. So x is my parameter. Okay, and then my function is all where I'm comparing data full name, okay, to x basically. So I close bracket like that. Final one for good measure. Enter. And there you have it. So you have false, false, true, false, true, false, 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 true, true. All right. So wherever you have true, that person's name is in the list. You have false, the person's name is not in the list. All right. So that's how you can use the all function to create such a powerful um, contains function. All right. In the next page, I'm going to show you how you can even go further to do some amazing stuff. So let's switch to the next page. So, all right. So in this page, the tax is very simple. Well, not so simple. You have um, a list of names over here, right? 
and you want to look up the information of that person only if the password the person provides is correct right so not only are you looking up the information the password has to be correct okay so that is where we need to do some serious checking one the password is in the database and two the password belongs to this particular person okay so first let's write the lookup function to look up the information the password is correct so it's going to be if i'm going to say if this cell contains true that's when i'm going to put my logic to test if the password is correct this cell is equal to true right i want you to give me an x lookup okay look up this from data full name right and then retain data hide it right yeah now if it's false return provide correct password right so if this is true give me the x lookup if it's false then provide and uh, give the text provide correct password so Rana is going to read provide correct password, right? Because I've not put the, um, the validation for that the password is true or false now. So I'm going to quickly run through the other one, speed up the video, and then we'll go on to see how we can do the um, validation of the password. Okay, so now we have our formulas in place. So if this is done right, once I put a name in and I put in the right password, okay, this information should pop up. Other than that, I should have provide correct password. Okay, so now how do we ensure that this information is going to always be providing the correct, so it's going to always look looking up the correct information. Now I'm going to take up a password for this particular person. Let's say um, Luke Martin. By the way, the passwords are in this column. So you see column E, we have a password column. I'm going to copy the information for Luke Martin's password, paste it over here, into sheet V. Okay, and you notice that uh, my passwords have this uh, hidden kind of characters, right? I use a custom format, so Control 1. When you come to custom formats, when you see my formats section for the text, I just say uh, represent all text with this um, string of um, asterisks, right? So regardless of the type over there, this asterisk will always show that sort of heights my password and give that cool password kind of feel. All right, so now let's look up the, or let's validate whether the password and the name can be found in the database. Okay, so we will basically use the formula that we just learned using the all function, right? First of all, we write a formula that is just going to basically test if the password provided, right, is in the list of password. So we're going to say equal to, um, equal to all, right, data, Right, so from our data table, we have a column called password. We are saying that is equal to this password provided. Okay, so when you press enter, it's going to give us true because this password can be found in that list. Now, basically, any password you select from this column, so select any password for anybody, right, and I bring it over here, control shift V, it's still going to give me true because that password is in the list. Okay, now you realize that this is not um, appropriate, right? You shouldn't be able to use any password to check anybody's information. You should be able to use only the person's password to check their information. Okay, so in this case, we have to modify this formula to ensure that not only is a password in the database, but the password corresponds to that particular name. Okay, and how do we ensure this? Simply by modifying this formula a bit. So we're going to have two logics in this case. The first logic is that the password is in the database and the password belongs or it corresponds to this particular name. So we're going to say, and that's multiplied, password, so open bracket, data, full name, is equal to this full name. So when you do this, like that, close bracket like this, not only does the password have to be in the list of password, but then it has to correspond to this particular full name. So I press enter, you see now I have false, right? Because Luna Sanders' password isn't the password I just pasted over here. So until we select that password, so this is Luna Sanders' password, copy this control C, come here and I paste this control shift V, right? Then I have the information of Luna Sanders. Okay, 
Now, you notice that this works very well, okay? But the only issue is if I change this to uppercase, right? So SS54, SS4S, and then capital S, and I press enter, it still works. But with passwords, passwords are case sensitive. Okay, so how do we ensure that if the right case isn't typed, okay, the password is rejected? So in that case, this particular formula doesn't actually meet our purpose. We need to still modify this formula to ensure that our formula is case sensitive. Okay, so in that case, we need another function called the exact function. So the exact function is case sensitive and it ensures that until the right cases are typed, then you have the right result. So if I have Daniel like this, so um, Daniel like this, right? And I compare it, so this is the first text, and I compare it to Daniel like this. In this case, you see the N is small letter. In here, the N is capital letter. That's the only difference that enter it gives me false. Okay, it has to be exactly the same thing. So that's how this function is going to be helpful to us. So it's going to work like this, equal to exact right i'm going to compare password there's a list of password and say this is equal to no in this case for exact you don't bring any code you just list the two variables to so the list and then this like that you see press enter and you have what false to go out right however if you change this to the appropriate thing small letter s so i'm going to do small letter s then you have a true popping up here. So that's how it works. Okay, with this in place, you know that once you wrap it all around this, you are good to go. So all like this, enter, and then we have what we have what true. Do you get it? So that's how we're going to make our password case sensitive. So in this formula, it's only the password that we need to be case sensitive. The name it can be um, uppercase, lowercase is fine. Once it matches the name, that's fine. We even have a drop down list, so doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type here exact, okay? So exact data password. I'm going to move the equal to a comma, and that's it. That should actually work. Like this, when I press enter, we have true. If I change this to big S like that, press enter, I have false, right? So. Just with this little alteration, you realize how powerful you make what your Excel formula. So that is how the all function actually works as a contain function. I hope you enjoyed this session like I did, and I hope to see you in the subsequent one. Thank you, and see you again soon. If this video was helpful, and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list, so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.